Crypto DLT with Mr. Connector. Be sure to subscribe. Hit the notification bell for daily content. Let's go. Hey guys, it's Mr. Connector again. We're doing great again today. Had a little setback in the prices yesterday. Bitcoin reached its all-time high and then, of course, got dumped. And, of course, everything's still tied to Bitcoin, evidently. So it really doesn't matter what any of these projects are doing because they're all just tied to Bitcoin. What a crazy market we live in right now. But we know the possibility of this space, guys. We know what's coming. We know that utility will reign in the end. We're just sitting back and observing right now, trying to pick up some of these utility coins on these red days. Looks like yesterday, Electronium dropped down the most 14% after that big run up they had because of their upgrade to their brand new blockchain. Digital Bits is down, Holo Tokens down, but they've had pretty good run ups in the past month or so if you're looking to buy deep reds i'd look about the 90 day chart maybe let's see still zahal and energy web and xdc what's down on the year look at corium down 76 percent on the year that might be a good pickup for you i wouldn't buy while the prices are really high we try to wait for those deep red days but what's doing great today we've got in the Mr. Connector portfolio, Metal Dow up 40% yesterday while everything else was crashing. Metal Dow was soaring. This token's been hovering around $1.50 for the longest time, and now it's all of a sudden $3.50. The CEO of Stellar, Daniel Dixon, says that 2024 will be the year of the DAO. So we're going to keep an eye on the decentralized autonomous organizations. What else is doing good? We've got near protocol, ocean protocol, trying to make a quick comeback. XRP had a pretty good drop yesterday, but hit some pretty good volumes though. XRPC's 50% surge in staggering $7.8 billion trading volume. This from you dot today. In a remarkable turn of events, the trading volume of XRP has witnessed an unprecedented surge, soaring by an astounding 50% within a mere 24 hours. This surge has propelled the combined turnover on both the spot market and derivatives market to an astonishing $7.8 billion. You guys, we do keep our eyes on the prices. It's uh, interesting just to keep up to date with everything going on. But we know the true value lies in the underlying tech. We know that we're not in a market that has price discovery yet. So we are not getting too distracted on prices. If, if you guys are just getting into this space and you're seeing your investment go down or even up, don't get too excited. Try not to worry about the fiat value of what you hold because who knows what fiat's going to do. I suggest maybe finding a good portfolio tracker app. And yes, that will help you keep up with the, with the fiat value of your portfolio. But what you're really trying to do is increase the number of units of each utility, quality utility cryptos that are going to be used, that are going to be in high demand. As soon as we get the price discovery, as soon as we get some clarity in this space, and we always try to take a quick look at commodities from the Business Insider. Biggest commodity gainer is Palladium at 8.7%. Gold's up to $2,139. Silver, $24. All right, we passed over that 24 mark. Let's go silver. And speaking of silver, we know that these BRICS countries are working on a bridge digital currency. We talked about that yesterday with China using the M-Bridge platform to settle between currencies. And who are the BRICS members? Brazil, Russia, India, and China are the founding members. South Africa, the smallest member in terms of economic clout and population, was the first beneficiary of the expansion of the bloc in 2010 when the grouping became known as BRICS. Together, the countries account for more than 40% of the world population and a quarter of the global economy. So that's only the four founding members plus South Africa that already account for 40% of the world. 
And which nations want to join? We've got Iran, Saudi Arabia, Argentina, Ethiopia, Bolivia, and Algeria are trying to get into BRICS. Is this going to compete with the dollar? Is the dollar going to have to change to keep up with these asset-backed currencies? We shall see. Here we have ISO 20022 reposting from Lena Petrova here. She's talking about BRICS. Let's listen to this. Uh, it's a little bit long, so I'll speed it up just a little bit. For joining me. Today, the BRICS block announced that it will work on creating a payment system that is based on blockchain and digital technologies. This new system will settle trades and transactions, and it will effectively become an alternative option to the United States dollar. The move is going to be absolutely crucial in helping the block trade in local currencies, and it will help them reduce their reliance on the dollar, of course. This is yet another step towards de-dollarizing. The blockchain system is going to be part of the BRICS financial system that will allow the member countries to completely avoid using any of the Western transfer systems, such as the SWIFT, for example. The BRICS announced that the system will be available to countries, to businesses, and even to people. The announcement underscored that they do want the system to be completely free of politics, of course referring to Western economic sanctions here. You may recall that I shared an overview of all 2024 BRICS block plans in a recent video. One of the main goals this year is to facilitate BRICS countries' monetary transitions, and this is precisely what we're seeing here. Yuri Oshakov, who is a Russian diplomat, presidential aide, and one of the BRICS representatives, said that they are working to develop what's referred to as the contingent reserve arrangement. So they're working on a reserve that will, uh, in theory, back the currency. So their currency is likely not going to be fiat. This agreement between all BRICS countries will lay out the system regarding the use of local currencies. So we're definitely starting to see the block go beyond just planning. They're actually starting to execute their plans. And you may also recall that Russia is the chair of the BRICS block this year, so the news will likely be announced by the Russian side. And there is no timeline that we know of uh, anyway at this point in time of when the new BRICS blockchain system will be launched. But if you recall, the BRICS summit is scheduled for October of this year and it will take place in Kazan. So These countries are getting ready. They are protecting themselves with their own asset-backed currencies. They are protecting themselves against sanctions. There's uh, another clip here to post, watch. He said Russia has never set BRICS in opposition to other international platforms. BRICS does not compete with anyone, he says, nor does it challenge anyone. It is not an anti-West association. Of course, anything that is not pro-West is immediately seen as anti-West using that very simple logic. Um, but these new systems that the bloc is developing are supporting them and they're developing economies and the West is free to do away with sanctions in order to make the dollar appealing again. So there's that option on the table too, but of course nobody wants to use that, right? Another statement uh, by Ushakov that I know many of you would appreciate is this one. He says the recipe for BRICS attractiveness and success is based on the absence of a confrontational or hidden agenda. It brings together like-minded countries, he says. The BRICS states express the interests of the global majority. One of such interests is de-dollarization that is clearly on top of their priority list. Moving away from the dollar and the move's consequences were discussed during the interview that Tucker Carlson had with Russia's President Vladimir Putin. Here well said, Lena Petrova. If you guys are running Brave Browser or Firefox, you can install TextRP. I've got a good video on that, explaining that and demoing how to import your Twitter messages. Basically, it's a great way to combine all your messaging into one place and tie that to an XRP wallet. Looks like they've got a space today at 3 o'clock Eastern if you want to tune in and check that out. But if you've got that text RP account, you can hit me up in the connector room. It's a public room. And what's Crypto Banker SHX? have to say stronghold is a wrapped sorbonne asset something huge is happening with xlm shx and velo and here it shows here he's on stellar expert 
looking at the issuer here, Stronghold, and they've changed its summary to a wrapped Sorbonne asset. So we're starting to see Stellar smart contracts come into play. As soon as they went live with that, we started seeing uh, you could deposit any blockchain onto the Lobster wallet and convert that into the Stellar blockchain. So a lot of these issuers are, they seem to be running Sorbonne smart contracts. And that looks like no different for Stronghold. And here's one from Matt XR Patriot. At least four cables are completely cut off from communication. Communication between Europe, Asia, and Africa interrupted after undersea cables were broken due to Houthi attacks in the Red Sea. Reasons unknown. About 25% of the cables lead to Europe were damaged, according to the telecom operator. U.S. intelligence stated that the West is not able to fight Houthis adequately because of their unspecified numbers of weapons which can't be recognized. Is our internet at risk, guys? All these continents are connected with undersea cables. Is this the true purpose of Starlink? We already saw Russia have a test. It was a couple years ago. They completely cut off their country from all other countries' internet. And they had a closed-off system to run perfectly. You know, we're starting to see these sovereign countries less dependent on other countries now and if this conflict keeps getting worse it looks like these undersea cables are a big target so what if they get cut well possibly what we hear of the new quantum financial system coming is that these countries are going to be siloed off and only be able to communicate with one another through the starlink system so if your country acts up and the other countries have some mechanism to vote you out of the system, they can cut your country off from Starlink. Which, if the whole world is behind kicking you off, say there's like some kind of a temporary ban, just like you get timed out from connecting with other countries. You know, that's your trade going down. That's your GDP. And it has, from what I see, the possibility to be very fair. It all depends on how it's governed. We shall see. And we've been discussing how the current administration is trying to win these little battles in court to try to set them as precedent on other larger cases in cryptocurrency. Uh, And here we have Stuart Alderati, uh, Ripple's head legal counsel. I don't know much about this proxy access case argued in the Fifth Circuit yesterday, but when a judge says the SEC's rules are so vague and loosey-goosey that no one knows whether they'll be at risk. She may be onto something. And here beneath that, she later said corporations may feel obliged to seek the agency's permission to exclude proposals because the SEC's rules are so vague and loosey-goosey that nobody knows whether they'll be at risk from not asking. We need the rules of the road, guys. All these developers that went to Ethereum after the quasi-free pass from Bill Hammond, you can't blame them for going towards a project that ha- that they thought had legal clarity, but it actually doesn't. It, it was like developers were fooled to go work on projects that these bankers were behind. I mean, you got JP Morgan involved in MetaMask. I mean, come on. The XRP ledger could have had all this progress all these years of all these developers that could have been working on it it's crazy and from payment infrastructure news a new report analyzes the readiness of banks for the fedwire migration to iso 20022 banks are unprepared to meet the iso demand the paper states with regard to one of the study results and let's look at these results. A survey of U.S. corporate finance participants from 1,037 midsize and large organizations underlines that approximately 57% interest in leveraging automated payables and receivables software with 46% confirming that they plan to utilize ISO 2022 for this purpose with 17% of them already using the standard. 
well, the rest of them better get on board or they're just going to go away. And maybe they were already planning to go away. And this just goes through all the benefits of, of using ISO. And at the end, they underline that as the industry standardizes the ISO as the primary messaging standard, financial institutions need to act decisively to solidify their position in the financial ecosystem. By implementing ISO 2022, financial institutions are set to be able to meet the current demands and needs while increasing growth in the digital era. Being able to meet certification deadlines for Fedwire migration to ISO 2022, Finsley aims to support other financial institutions intending to transition to ISO 2022 native solutions for their Fedwire processing. They're all getting linked up, guys. And that's from WellFug Capital. Binance has suspended Solana withdrawals. Hmm, I wonder what's going on there. I just don't see how people can still leave their funds on centralized exchanges. We need more DEX trading, guys. DEX trading. This is from Eleanor Terrett. Prometheum has added a disclaimer to the website that says SIPIC will not cover digital asset securities trading on its platform that are not registered with the SEC. And at the bottom, it says, therefore, there will be no SIPIC protection for digital asset securities traded over Prometheum ATS that are investment contracts that are not registered with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. So Prometheum is just saying that, you know, their first asset they're going to list is Ethereum. So Ethereum has to be registered as a security for them to even do that. Here's one from Hedera. Digital security and post-quantum technology firm at Seals Corp. Let me follow them. Seals Corp offers a unique vertically integrated set of secure ICs and trusted services to implement certified digital security into connected devices and systems. Interesting. We ha we'll have to keep an eye on Seals Corp. Anyways... Let me start over. Digital security and post-quantum technology firm Seals Corp has started with WiseKey to develop a proof of technology for a crypto wallet on the Hedera network, aiming to combat emergency threats related to quantum computing. All right, we're starting to see our quantum proof wallets, guys. And while we're on Hedera, we have DaVinci Graph posting, are you interested in Hedera smart contracts? DaVinci Graph Smart Contracts offers examples and resources for learning. Start building on Hedera today. You guys leave me a comment if you have anything to add to what we discussed today. Hope you all have a great day. Like and subscribe. Mr. Connector out.